Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about 3 stocks in my opinion that can quadruple or even more x your money. So if it's your first time here, my name is Ivan and on this channel I'm talking about money, business, trading, trading and investing in general. Please do consider subscribing, click that like button and smash the bell button just like any other YouTuber would tell you to do but I would highly appreciate it if you can do it on this channel because it does help with the channel, it helps with the YouTube algorithm so that you, YouTube can push this video to as many people as possible and possibly help them. And with that being said, please stay tuned because I'm coming right back. Hey guys and thank you for staying on this channel watching this video. To wrap it up really quickly what I could do right now is basically tell you the name of the three stocks and we could wrap it up. You could, you could judge me and say hey these, these are not so hot stocks or yes you could agree with me and do your own research but that's not the point of a YouTube video. What I want to do is keep you informative and give you the latest news on these stocks. So I will tell you two of these stocks right now because they have a very related business and it's not just me that think that they are going to skyrocket and they have a potential to you know 5x 6x your money it's actually Bill Ackman and now with me saying this I think that you might also assume what these stocks could be so I'm just gonna bring it up so obviously it's Freddie Mae and a Freddie Mac so don't, don't don't stop the video keep on playing because after this I would bring up the video of a fellow youtuber interactive investor with Bill Ackman who shared his opinion and his outlook on the stocks in 2021 now I know that these companies could sound boring and then they went through uh, you know a shitstorm in 2007 2008 during the mortgage crisis and then the stock prices followed the shitstorm and it fell down significantly uh, don't worry about it now they have restructured the US government bailed them out and they basically repaid much more than initially agreed on to the US government now they're on the brick of being released back to the stockholders and because of that moment the right now could be the best thing best moment to purchase the stock and enjoy the ride up now that could happen but doesn't need to happen so as, as always you need to do your own research your and make uh, smart investments I'm not financial advisor but now without further ado let's go back to the video and let's check let, let's check that interview out and then we'll get back I will share you a couple of latest news that I found on the internet and we will comment on those after this I will tell you the third stock so stay tuned it's worth a look so Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are pretty well-known companies globally and they're also well known for blowing up in the financial crisis uh, Fannie and Freddie their business is basically buying up mortgages from banks kind of uh, what are called conforming mortgages that meet certain standards or mortgages on middle-class people's homes and uh, they you know chop those mortgages they put them into uh, in, into uh, uh, they chop them up into little pieces in effect by the issue by issuing securities backed by them and they guarantee those securities so it's a it's a insurer if you will of very very low risk assets and it's how the using the US housing finance system works. We have a 30 year prepayable fixed rate mortgage because Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, beginning as early as the 1930s, uh, we were in that business. They blew up during the financial crisis uh, because they were inadequately capitalized and they started buying subprime and other you know, securities and uh, it wasn't adequate oversight. Um, we, uh, seven years ago, uh, bought into Fannie and Freddie on the belief, you know, the government ended up taking them over, putting them into what was called conservatorship, and then injecting a large amount of capital. And people believed that Fannie and Freddie would never be able to pay back the government, and uh, they were, in effect, uh, insolvent. The reality is they recovered very, very quickly from the financial crisis, and they repaid the government with the 10% interest and more uh, over time. Um, but political, for political reasons, the Obama administration stepped in and said, well, uh, even though you paid us back, we're going we're gonna to consider our obligation not paid back at all. And so the stocks languished in the kind of low $2 a share range. Um, President Trump uh, and, President, and uh, the Secretary of uh, Treasury, uh, Steve Mnuchin, basically said, look, this is not a tenable situation. These entities need to go back, they need to be recapitalized, they need to go back to the public markets. And they began a series of steps early in the Trump administration. And 
almost all those steps have been taken. The most recent step was the issuance of a capital rule, which which says that these entities are going to have to hold you know, something like 280 billion of capital. And today they have, you know, call it 30 billion of capital. Um, on December 9th, uh, the Supreme Court is hearing a case as to whether the government's expropriation of these companies was legal. So that's a really interesting. You'll get some interesting data on how the Supreme Court feels about it. It's a more conservative court now because of recent appointments. Conservative courts don't like expropriation of private companies. So there's a big opportunity there. And then it's the last two months of the of the Trump administration. Uh, Mnuchin, uh, we think, uh, will want to finish the, the job. Uh, if either of those two outcomes happens in a favorable way, this what is today a $2.50 stock could be a $10 stock in a very, very short order. And even Biden, if, if they are un, if neither of those two things happen, the Supreme Court does not rule in favor and uh, Mnuchin is too distracted by other things in the Trump White House to do anything, we still think that the next administration will, will continue on the path of bringing these companies back to the public market. So it's sort of an interesting special situation with a very attractive reward, trading you know maybe uh, something slightly above our cost seven years ago. So it's an investment that has not panned out yet uh, and as i say we're super long term but could, you know it's the only thing in the portfolio that could be up four five six x in the next 12 months so that's the uh, more exciting uh, part of the portfolio um, actually the the head of the um i think i've heard he passed away recently um when i described that situation to the head of the welcome trust uh the cio he said oh is that the sex and violence part of the portfolio and i said well it's an interesting way to describe it <laughs> All right, so we got this information covered from Bill Ackman. Now let's go to the, my trading station, my actually my PC. Let's check out the latest news. Okay, so if we just open a Wall Street Journal, as you can see, Wall Street Journal and Markets, and just check out the latest news like 18 hours ago, the 17th of January, 15th, the 14th, the 14th, the 10th of January, etc., you can read the positive headlines. Like for the first for the first example, Fannie Mae multifamily has completed over around 1.5 billion of low-income housing tax credits investments since 2018. Then let's move forward. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac can keep future earnings per agreement between Treasury and regulators. So I got this news here, I think. Yeah, there we go. So plus Fannie, Fannie and Freddie taxpayer stake won't be restructured under Trump, which which leaves us like they, they did start started the process, but they will not succeed because you know uh, the Trump is actually today is the 20th of January and the Trump is being removed from the White House and now the Biden is coming in, but the Biden uh, a, a administration can easily just continue to finish the job that they started. We will see how that will move forward. Okay, Americans are losing confidence in the housing market as COVID-19 pandemic rages on. But if you move, if you check out a little bit th uh, in detail, you can see that Fannie Mae actually increased the 2021 economic growth forecast because the COVID-19 actually did the markets did recover very quickly and now uh when markets recover just imagine if you've, you've been at home for you know quite a while and the only thing you want to do right now is hang out with people go visit places you know spend money on stuff and hopefully everything will, the economy will recover sooner than la la later right so we i'm expecting actually a quick recover which should also increase the spend expenditure on mortgages, which obviously can increase the capital, the income and the profit for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. But okay, that's my opinion. Now let's go and let's cover this news that I promised. Okay, so Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac can keep future earnings. There was a ruling uh, on between Treasury and regulators on that was published on 17th of January and the ruling was I'm not sure when, but okay, so it says that the two agencies reached an agreement to let the mortgage giants retain up to combine 45 billion in earnings, okay? So in the foreseeable future, that's good, okay? And also here, if you read this article, if when I scroll down, I believe that a guy called Mark Calabria has warned that more steps need to be taken to ensure that Fannie Mae, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac don't fail in a future housing crisis. And the way how he sees that is to allow them that uh, that they can raise money on the financial markets so that they basically can get back to the tax tax holders, right? So if, if I'm gonna scroll down and find this actually. 
Uh, in announcing the agreement, uh, the director, Mark Calabria, said it was a step in the right direction, <clears throat> but he also said the retained earnings alone, up to $45 billion, that they said are, are insufficient to adequately capitalize the enterprise, as Calabria said. So until the enterprise is being Freddie Mac and Freddie Mae, uh, can raise private capital, they're at risk of failing in the next housing crisis. So that shows that they're working towards uh, in good direction and that if the, the government decides to let them go, uh, that they will be back to the taxpayers' hands and they will be able to raise money through the sell, selling, s selling of stocks and which would mean that the, their stock could rise significantly. Okay, well, when we go moving forward, Fannie Mae multifunctionally closes 20, 2020 with record volume of $76 billion. So again, another record positive cash flow, positive money, positive, everything is positive with these companies. So that's another good news. And we have the Fannie Mae increases the economic growth forecast, just like I said a minute ago, and the latest forecast project economic growth to hit 5.3 instead of projected numbers in 2020, which were projecting uh, at 2.7 growth in 2021. So that all of these are good news for Freddie and Freddie Mac. And that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm expecting uh, that they will be hopefully let go from the government hands and that they will be able to raise money so they can have sufficient money for the future, if ever, economic crisis in mortgages. So with that being said, this kind of wrap up, wraps up the story about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Now let's go back to the third stock. All right, guys, so this covers Freddie Mac and Freddie Mae. Now let's get back to the third stock that I share with you, and that would be one of the biggest stocks, one of my biggest currently holdings that I have in my portfolio. And I did one of the videos, I actually did two videos on Pershing Square Tantum Holdings. And you can check them out in your top, I never know this, in your top right corner, it should be on my left side. So it's Pershing Square Tantum Holdings, it's SPAC, it's Bill Ackman's SPAC. And it's very specific SPAC, it's the biggest SPAC ever, over four, over five billion dollars, actually four to seven billion dollars that he's planning to use to bring one of the privately held companies public. And this is my decision. That's what I think uh, could be a potential huge uh, multiplier of your money in today's stock market. Okay, that stock could really maybe double, triple, quadruple, or five x your money in the long run. I also recorded. Uh, I don't want to go in a very much detail about this stock because I did record a video and I highly suggest you to watch in the top left, left corner about every tiny detail. But this is one of the largest holdings in my portfolio and I truly believe that this could skyrocket my portfolio. And with that being said, if you like these kind of videos, as said in the beginning of a video, please consider subscribing, click that like button, smash the bell button so that YouTube algorithm can bring these kind of videos from my channel to as many people as possible and possibly help those people. Well, thank you very much for staying until the end of this video and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.